knitting friends. Uh, welcome. This is my knitting show and tell and uh, I am sneaking in some minutes here to talk to you. There is nobody else around. Nobody in my house. My neighbors, also known as my parents, are away. So it is very quiet, which is unusual, especially the past week. Um, the kids were home. We had a week off of school. My husband was ill, so um, we're going from everyone being here to nobody being here. And I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to come on here and show you some of the things that I've been working on during the past three weeks or so. Um, I have not prepared for this podcast at all. I haven't um, organized what I'm going to talk about except that I've just gathered some things. So I think I'll just get into it and um, we'll see whether I feel like this is worth publishing or not. Um, so the last time I was on here, I think I was ge gearing up for a test knit, starting a test knit for my own design. Um, well, maybe I should first say what I'm wearing. This is Celeste by Sari Nordland. It's a circular yoke lace and bobble design. Um, it's something that I knit a couple of years ago. It's pretty straightforward. It has no short rows or um, anything like that. You just work the yoke split for body and sleeves and um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty standard construction except that the lace and bobble yoke is a little bit more advanced. Um, so this is my design here. This one is called the Garden Party Pullover and it is currently in testing. Um, testing is going well. It is a seamless top-down construction where you work increases along the shoulders at the same time you are increasing along the neck so you start off flat and then you increase the neck and then you join in the round and the rest of the sweater is worked in the round it's designed to use up all your little bits of yarn um, in fingering weight and holding them together you can transition colors and um, make a sweater out of your scraps. That's what my intention was. For this one, I actually purchased yarn because I used up all my scraps for the Gardy Cardi pullover, which is a similar kind of idea. Sorry, the Gardy Cardi is a cardigan, hence the name. It is not a pullover. So I had to purchase yarn for this design, which meant that I had, um, instead of little bits of scraps, I had more a larger quantities of each color and so that's why these chunks of color and it's a little it's more stripy than I had hoped but um, I think it still works uh, yes I think that's all I can say about that one um, it's currently in testing um, the test knit deadline is before Christmas but I think it will probably not come out until January, early January for this one. And yeah, that's that. Another finished object I have is this set of cabled accessories. These are also being test knitted right now. I have a fairly big group of test knitters working on it, which is a lot of fun. Each person ha is just working one item from the from the collection. So there's a cowl, a hat, and a pair of mittens. So it's cabled on one side and stockinette on the other. It's this herringbone cable which looks complicated, but actually it's, it's only two over two cables, which are simple to work and you don't have to have a cable needle to do those. Uh, I prefer to work cables without a cable needle. 
I find it a lot less cumbersome. Um, yeah, so this is the original cable pattern. I got this pattern from the Cable Stitch Source Book by Nora Gon, and then I used that to I used that chart and modified it to come up with this cable, and I also added in a little um, twisted stitch panel there, and then I further modified it for the mittens. So they're all kind of like cable cousins, but they're not identical twins or siblings. So this stuff, this is worked in Sassy String Squishy Worsted. It is a worsted weight, superwash yarn, and the color is called Steel Harbor. If you buy three skeins of that, you should be able to make one cowl, one set of mittens, and one hat. Unless you were choosing to do the largest size of each item, then you probably should get four skeins to not run out of yarn. But even then, it would be close because I offer a single brim option for this. This is a folded brim, so um, you work the one by one ribbing for a fair distance and then you can fold it up. But then I offer a option where it's just a single brim. So if you do the single brim of the largest size hat, you probably would only need one skein for that. And you only need one skein for the largest size cowl and you only need one skein for the largest size of mittens so you probably could get away with it if you did the single brim option i stuck this pom-pom on here um but it is just tied in so i can um just pop it out and i have it woven in that end so that i can keep taking putting it on and removing it as I need to I just took the photos this morning so I was doing both photos with and without the pom-pom and I'm not sure which one I will include for the final photos this is the smallest size hat um, not the smallest size hats I'm sorry this is the adult small hat originally it was supposed to be the medium but it turned out a little smaller than I had expected. I would still wear this hat size. I have a, I don't have a small head. Like when I measure my head, I should be an adult medium, but every hat I've ever knit has been too big. So I don't know if it's because I like a tighter fitting hat, maybe because my hair is so straight doesn't keep hats on my head they want to they want to shoot up <clears throat> um, so I need like more negative ease in order to keep a hat on my head I'm not sure why but um, usually I should fit an adult medium based on the sizes in, pa in hat patterns but I end up needing to knit the adult small so I will show you what it looks like I'll I even did my hair for you so this is a real sacrifice so it's just a standard beanie shape um yeah the double brim keeps your ears warm if that's such ch your chosen size you can like fold the brim up to make it even tighter beanie or you could loosen it to make a slouchy hat <clears throat> yeah I really enjoyed working these cable patterns I think I don't know if I realize that I enjoy cables <clears throat> but I really do enjoy it and I like these ones because there's a little bit of space so you do a cable here 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 every other row then you do some rows without cables then you do every other row of cables without cables so on and so forth so it keeps you kind of engaged um, but also gives you a break so this uh, set should be coming out um, before December so that you can knit some gifts for 
the holidays. Those are all of my finished objects. I have some works in progress. This, I don't know, I don't remember what stage this blanket was in the last time I showed you. I think I hadn't fully seamed the center back in. It is on a cable, like it's on my largest cable. I have two cables combined here to get this size of cable. So it's as big as I can show you without taking it off the needles but it starts from the center and is worked in the round and then I'm just finishing the edging all the way around with a feather and fan so um, I did some stripes and then the rest will be in the dark blue and it will be in the, the feather and fan so this is a blanket design it's actually all written up and ready to be tested, but I know how long each row takes. It takes me about a half an hour to do a row and I um, can't really commit to finishing my own sample at the moment. So um, I don't know if I will call for testers. I probably should get it started um, test knitting soon. And then just if people catch up to me, then we just have to wait. But anyway, I haven't made that a priority right now. Uh, yeah, it's not a necessarily a baby blanket. Like, it should be big enough that you could wear it as a shawl if you folded it in half. Here. Um, so it will be a big square, and then you can fold it in half to make a triangle, and then you could wear it like a shawl. Or you could wear it like a half shawl, which is basically a big square. Or you could use it as a throw blanket on your couch, or you could use it as a baby blanket. Really... I mean, I don't need to tell you how to use what you knit, but it is done mostly in superwash yarn and it has some color work, some garter slip stitch stripes, some bobbles, some lace. It kind of has it all. So it's a very engaging knit. It's not very, um, except for some of the little stockinette sections, it's not super mindless. But at the same time, that kind of keeps you motivated to keep going on a giant project like that. And it's all in fingering weight so yeah and then one of my most exciting projects I can't tell you about um, if you watched my previous episode you know that I had nearly finished a garment um, and I submitted it to a publication as part of their submission call for a um, issue coming out next year and um, actually this, so this is it. I won't show you anything except the stocking it. And it was accepted. Um, it's a really big deal for me. It's a publication you know, that's all I can tell you. And um, yeah, so they accepted it, but they want it in a different yarn color. And this one was done held with mohair and <clears throat> they didn't want the mohair. so. It is working up in, this is Crux Fibers Unspun, a Canadian sourced unspun yarn. <clears throat> and yeah, I did some swatches. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can tell you about that. Um, I know that you, those of you who um, were excited and were cheering for me to get the submission accepted will be really excited when I'm able to tell you about um, where it's going to be published so on and so forth so that one <clears throat> is kind of a priority I need to get it um, my own sample done so I've already done most of a sweater I don't think I was supposed to tell you that most of the item and now I have to do a second item <coughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I have a lot of ideas. Um, I'm really excited for all the test nets happening. And yeah, I think that's all. I don't have even have any farm news. Um, there's just not much 
going on where we have our winter hay stacked and we have our meat chickens already butchered and in the freezer we have our pigs happening this weekend and that's pretty much all for farm news. Um, I have to go and pick up my girls from their school and then drive to a town 40 minutes away to watch my oldest son's volleyball playoffs. So I should probably start thinking about that part of my day. And I hope you are well and that you are knitting lots of things give, that are giving you joy. Take care.